Hello, everyone. We are live. Welcome to Shadow Dance, an all Black, transgender, and gender non conforming poetry cipher. I'm so excited to be your host tonight. My name is Sean Avery Medlin. You can call me Sean, Sean Avery, all the same person. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a gamer and a hip hop nerd based in Phoenix. I'm also a rapper, a poet, an organizer, and as I said, your host for tonight. Thank you all for virtually attending the Transgender District of San Francisco's programming. I'm super hyped about tonight's lineup. We have poets and performers who really shake up and break down our expectations of online performances, of Black art, of poetry, and even our own individual sense of self. I'm grateful to be here as a wayfinder and a witness for tonight's magnitude. Before we get started, let's make a few essential acknowledgements. To start off, the Transgender District of San Francisco is the first legally recognized transgender district in the world, founded by three Black trans women in 2017. If you're curious about what kind of work the district does, you wanna know more events or more history, you can check out the website on the banner at the bottom of your screen right now. Make sure you get a little screenshot of that or write it down, however you wanna document that. Give you just a second here. Should be coming across your screen right now. Next is a land acknowledgement. While we perform tonight, we acknowledge that we are doing so on the unceded, unsurrendered traditional territory of the Otham Nation and Peeposh tribe for those like myself who are in what we call Phoenix and the traditional territory of the Olone, Vamatush, and, Ma and Mawikma tribes for those of us in the transgender district of San Francisco or in that area of California. These original people are the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. And we pay our respects to both elders and youth who continue to fight against practices that erase indigenous people's history and culture. As a displaced indigenous person myself, I take this time to also acknowledge the deep wounds suffered by black folks across our diaspora and hold space for the ways that we too fight to protect our history, culture, and lives from erasure. And lastly, tonight's show will feature captioning. Please be patient with the captions. There may be a few spelling errors or maybe a few words missing or added. Uh, we ask for your grace as we work towards making our programming more accessible. Cool. Now I'm gonna tell you the lineup for tonight and the structure of the night, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first performer. So our lineup is first Davina Divinity, then Elio Irvin, then myself, Sean Avery Medlin, then Fearless Armoretto, and then Nilani Last. After each performer, I will have a very short Q&A or interview, if you will, about their work, ideas, feelings, beliefs, maybe what they had to eat this week. And also there will be some comments and questions coming in from you all watching, and we'll be able to shout out some of those on air as well. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the first artist of tonight, Davina Divinity, she, her pronouns, she is a multidisciplinary artist living in Brooklyn, New York. New York, I apologize. Her work explores gender, love, nature, and movement. Her second book of poetry, Touching Paradise, was published by Thistle Milk Press earlier this month. You can go get that now. And I welcome her to the virtual stage. Reminder that no one owns the right to my femininity. My embodiment of the divine feminine is not contingent upon having a pussy. Reminder that makeup is one of the primary tools for trans femmes to communicate our truth to the world. And it's really fun and pretty. 
Don't confuse survival techniques with superficiality. My name is Davina Divinity. I am a poet and performance artist based in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. So let's get right on into this journey together. I look down at my chest and possibilities. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? I have little to no definition in this area of my body. Some muscles and some hairs that I can't stand. Not really sure how to feel about you. Have you ever seen such a beautiful night? Warm melanin in the afternoon. The feeling of vomit coming from your neck. The feeling of tears building up in your lower lash line. The feeling of triumph after trauma. The feeling of an embrace from another body. The feeling of lips touching. Lavender hair lighting up the Brooklyn bar. Her platforms were meant for stomping. My brown sister, how I love you so. Lather me in the essence of you. Whisper to me a new prophecy. Talking to myself. I've been trying to make friends with the fly in my new bedroom for 48 hours without success. I've been trying to recover from a cold for four days. I've been trying to make art for two weeks. I've been trying to cultivate a network of humans filled with love for my entire life. Now that my wall of wigs is nearly complete and I've forgotten the face of the human who left me cold hearted, the world is mine and black women are the only God I serve. So I will become the only goddess I serve. I just can't wait to grow tits. I can't wait to throw it in their face. I can't wait to be called miss and ma'am and honey and baby and girl and sweetie and babe and to have my skin touched by a new lover in a new city. I lay awake at night staring at the ceiling and I weep as I count my blessings. I'm blessed because the world sees me as different. I'm blessed because the goddess has and will always order my steps. I am blessed because my body does not match the vision in my mind. I'm blessed because I'm still breathing. I'm blessed because I'm trans. I'm blessed because I'm queer. I'm blessed because I'm black. I am blessed because I exist. After a month on HRT, I can feel my fucking boobs throbbing. So I exist as I exist. There's a draft in my room and he's not here to keep me warm. Would you like eggs with a side of your eggs? Would you like to rub aloe vera on my budding breasts? Would you like me to sit on your face? Would you like to become America's next top model? We met on OkCupid one time, so I'm not sure why he's texting me, fucking idiot. The transphobic bartender resembles a fucking puffer fish, yet someone carried his seed to term, twice. I may not understand vocal training, but I understand combat. Vastly inappropriate and bro-ish specimen seeks laughter at his corny jokes. Second specimen seeks female to penetrate the masculinity out of him. What happens next on the Trixie Mattel show is up to you. <laughs> oh goodness, that was a very good one. Staring into the iris of my $200 webcam and pretending they are my partner. The green light comes on and when the neon soft light hits my body, I begin my transformation. Showtime, bitches. What's your name, sweetheart? I'd love to be there sucking your cock. Do you meet? Do this instead. Let's see that girl cock. Bend over, doggy. I don't want to see your face. I'm straight. You into white guys? You top? You let that man fuck you? My wife left me because I cheated on her with a trans. You look just like her. Did your boobs get bigger, dear? Nice. You do meetups? Kick? Please unblock me. You look like you could use a sugar daddy. I love your BBC. Please say it. Please say you want me to suck your nigger dick. I'm black, so it's okay. Okay, I lied, I'm not black, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please don't block, don't block me, please. Meat? 
These are but a fraction of the exchanges. This goes on for hours. All the while, I'm in character. I'm her, Darling. Darling doesn't get upset very easily. Rolls with the punches. Darling is sweet, yet stern. Hot, sexy, great natural little tits. Darling shakes that ass real well. Darling is a star. I should get an Oscar for my performance as her. Taking off the Darling mask takes time. The reestablishing of the true self from the false. The grounding of the cum drip floor beneath me. The removing of handfuls of bobby pins. The soreness of my genitals. The shakiness of my joints. The stabbings to my self-worth. The inevitability of someone I know seeing my asshole. I remove Darling's face from mine with the hot pastel colored face cloth. I look into the mirror and she stares back at me saying only the following. I love you. I point my foot like the ballerina I wish to be, gracing a cloud with my big toe just before it evaporates. Carry love throughout the universe. Mucho, mucho, mucho amor. The continual upward reaching at a sky in retrograde. I can almost feel it, the shadow on their face. A glimpse of beauty before returning back to center. Women like me are invisible. Women like me are caricatures. Women like me are mistresses. Women like me are picked last. Women like me are dismembered. Women like me don't get movements, monuments, news coverage. Women like me are in danger. Women like me. Women like me. Women like. Women like me are also beautiful. Women like me are resilient. Women like me are pioneers. Women like me are magic. Women like me are strong. Women like me are legendary. Women like me are and will forever be an intentional force, an infinite resistance to find a realm where we can not only survive but thrive while touching paradise. Ding. Connection without awkwardly falling. <laughs> we found each other in an awkward headspace. How to love. Ah, fuck it, I think I'll flirt with the barista. You're the sunset and rising thoughts. Tracing your belly with my stiletto nails. Bites of Earth's candy in the morning and a bend of the muscle in the evening. I could hold you forever if you let me. I know you can't help it, but I'm not used to it. How to love. You show me. Embracing peace and stability. Two orbits around the sun. I wombo, you wombo. Black love and levitation. I feel how to love when we're holding hands and meditating. Vacationing, hiking, a flickering, past the blunt and a smooch. Let's talk, touch my butt, and let's talk black babies and pugs. How to love is when I am with you. I've become a better woman because I'm just in love with you. Next one is called gender euphoria. I feel like we talk often about gender dysphoria, but we don't often talk about euphoria and what that means and how all trans folks were, you know, we're on a, this journey together and we get to create ourselves. And that's something that's so special and beautiful. And when you feel like you've made a step forward, that sense of euphoria, even if it's just a little win for yourself and your body and your mind, uh, I think it's something that often gets lost and that I like to write about and think about a lot. To feel complete, or more importantly, free. I want to feel freedom in my flesh vessel. I want to exist and equally cease at the same time. I want to awaken without a shadow of a doubt that I am the divine. So what if I can't talk for a month, if only to finally be able to be heard? I want to swing my new titties so high above the horizon, causing the sun to eclipse and only my brown nipples to remain. I want to roam as brazenly and as heavenly as my gender non-conforming ancestors. I want and wish and moan and manifest the freedom to smile at my renovated flesh sack. Astral project me into a planet with less mess, transcendent to the infinite, with skies of pink and of purple and of orange, gradients, stars and fog, land that is green and blue and vast, flowers, fungal organisms resembling spikes, softness, blobs, petals, tadpoles, there's always been plenty of resources to go around. This is not a poem about down with cis, but a manifesto of trans supremacy 
bow down to our scars, bow down to our minds, bow down to our art, bow to our invention, to our sense of fashion, in a utopia of gender euphoria. False euphoria, a cyclone of white hatred, the last spark shooting from a wire. Where will your kids grow up and what world will they inherit? The universe inside my body submerging into theirs, if only temporarily. A projectile in the air becoming the size of the sun. It is on fire coming straight toward us. How many Aryan soldiers can you take on? I can't breathe, but they don't care. All right, so that's it for my set. Um, insert B-roll footage or something at the end of this, honey. Uh, and thank you guys again so much for having me. Mwah. Yeah, your set is so dope. Thank you so much for just sharing your work. Um, I was saying a little bit of this earlier, but um, I really love the aesthetics of everything, the set colors, your makeup, um, you know, like the the purple sparkly blanket, the flowers, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, even the way that like your book covers just like fit yeah. aesthetically with everything, right? Yeah, you know, I, I I have an aesthetic and I stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> Commit to your look. Yeah, no, for real. That's like really important for artists, I think, especially in this like very image driven, you know, sort of like um time that we're in, right? Um like you having a knack for the visual aesthetic uh, interest, the curiosity, whatever you want to say is like, really like can give you an upper hand, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I wanted to ask you some questions. Is that cool? Sure, yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So um, something I enjoy about your work is your choice to be comedic in your writing and your performance. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so can you talk just a little bit about using comedy within vulnerable poetry about like your body and, and intimacy and things like that and, and why you make that choice? Yeah, well, it's definitely in part a coping mechanism, right? And um, it's, you know, hiding a lot of the sadness beneath. And also I like uh, my poetry sort of having like this balance with all the chaos that is indeed going on between the lines and quite literally on the page, right? Because my uh, work, uh, when it's like written and printed, like in my books, ding, um, it's like sort of floating around and just like having a moment and uh, sort of dancing on the page, right? Um, and as are my thoughts. So I like to just like, you know, keep it a little lighthearted while you're um, floating on the page with me, uh, reading along. <laughs> nice, thank you. Thank you for like thinking about the reader in that way, right? Um, it's really important. Oh, oh, sweet. We got a from Kane. You are incredible. I was really into the dash of humor sprinkled throughout just as I was typing. LOL, you asked that cute. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah, I get some of love. Um, well, you know, we've brought up your books already like twice. So, congrats on your second published yes. collection of poetry. There it is, y'all. Um, yeah, it actually, uh, it came out a week before my birthday and the, the s plan was this is going to drop on my birthday and like, you know, we'll see how it, how it goes. Uh, the pre-order sold out the day it came out a week before my birthday and then the book itself sold out on Valentine's Day, the day after my birthday. So I was like, oh, happy Valentine's Day to me and to everyone who got their copy and I hope it gets to you via USPS, um, you know, with all that's going on. Uh, <laughs> I do not, I do not put them in envelopes. Do not write me letters. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, so wait, that makes you an Aquarius sun, correct? Yes, yes, yes. The best, sign, the best sign. What's, what's your sign? What's your sign, Sean? I'm a Taurus sun. Yes! Oh, Taurus is the best sign. Oh my goodness. I did a small survey and Taurus was voted the best sign amongst random coworkers at my day job. So, uh, I love your day job. I for you. <laughs> um, sweet. So like also on the topic of your book, um, 
how can well can you talk about how this collection is different from your first collection and what you want um you know readers or listeners or whatever to get out of this book yeah the i feel like the first collection i was uh the first book into the divine was a lot about um me sort of coming into my transition right and it sort of has it's broken down into three parts which is like sort of before transitioning during this very like tumultuous year of my life which was like 2018 um and then uh what i thought would happen like in six years this like weird utopian like wedding scenario i'm created at the end for the uh, viewer so that was sort of a sad journey in a book and it was a lot longer than this cute little chat book uh by a lot and i was like wow i really had a lot of sadness and a lot to say um and you know with with into the divine i was going the fuck through it but with this book um with my newest one i feel like i was writing more from a place of anger and a place of passion and spirit and uh just wanting to really like let all my walls down and i wasn't concerned with a breakup most importantly <laughs> with something so trivial <laughs> so i just feel like i've grown a lot and uh so is my work and my spirit and the things i'm trying to put out into the universe nice yeah that makes sense you know and even just thinking about what you said about your first book, right? Like at that time, things like that always feel like the whole universe, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, <laughs> but <laughs> um, dope to hear about your growth and the ways, the new direction that this book is taking, right? And hopefully maybe the third, fourth, et cetera. Will oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope to, I'm going to write as long as I'm able to write, you know? <laughs> The world, the world needs black trans stories, and like you know, uh, I wish all. If I if I could say anything tonight, I would say I wish all black trans people a very supremacy. Mm, black trans supremacy. <laughs> That's uh, all. <laughs> cool. So yeah, let's let's close out. But before we do, we have a, something from the the audience, the virtual audience. Kane wants to know. Um, they want to order Touching Paradise, but you said it's sold out. Is there any other way to get it? Um, yes. Uh, so if you DM me, we're doing a, we might be doing a small second round. Um, I would say D DM me and you will be put on the short list. Um, but it's going to be very small and get it. Don't sleep. That's what I was saying. Don't sleep on it. <laughs> Well, y'all heard it. You got to hurry up and get this. This is a hot commodity sold out. Holy crap. Weeks ago. Yes, yes. We're trying to make sure that we get your socials to people. Yes. The and my first book is still up. There's plenty of this one because it was self-published. So, ding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, all, that's all in the chat, I believe. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Davina. Um, your performance is gorgeous. To everyone watching, um, if you want to support her directly, you can send some money to that Venmo or that Cash App. You can PM to get that second book. You could pick up the first book that's already out. You got a lot of options, y'all, if you want to support this amazing artist. Ding. <laughs> Dope. Okay. Oh, it's so good. I'm so happy that everything is working now. We can get through the night. Um, I'm really excited for these uh, performances. Um, let's just keep it rolling. Our next performer is Elio Irvin. Elio Irvin is a writer, speaker, musician, and activist. They are a Bay Area transplant who uses spoken word to break down racial stigmas and muse on universal experiences. Currently studying software engineering, Elio believes learning is a lifelong pursuit. They hope to blend poetic creativity with technical skills to create accessibility to resources for communities plagued by racial disparity and classism. Welcome Elio to the virtual stage, y'all. Hello, and thank you for joining. My name is Elio, and I have just a few comments before we start. First, a trigger warning to all listening and watching. The piece you will experience contains graphic imagery and language. Please take care of your mental space as we prepare to engage. Secondly, 
I in no way assert or claim that the images included are my own. Rather, a curated group of art and photography from mainly black American artists. After the piece, I will be discussing the artist's influence and answering any questions. We start here in the emptiness. Black bodies swinging. Black bodies screaming. Black bodies suffocating. 1526. Black bodies swinging, black bodies screaming, black bodies suffocating, 1626. Black bodies swinging, black bodies screaming, black bodies suffocating. 1726. Black bodies swinging. Black bodies screaming. Black bodies suffocating. 1826. Black bodies swinging. Are you tired? Are you numb? Black bodies screaming. Are you bored? Have you rolled your eyes yet? Black bodies suffocating. Have you called me unoriginal? 1926. Do you have hope? Are you on the edge of your seat? Tongue turned Nile, rushing with anticipation. Black body swinging. Slap back futility of hope whilst conversation stands silent. Are you comfortable? Are you safe from side eyes and whispers under tongue? Black bodies screaming. Have you absolved your crimson palms? I'm not that way. That was a long time ago. Pores profuse with the stench of guilt. You can never wash clean what was born, bathed, and baptized in blood. Black bodies suffocating. What will your children tell their children when they walk down the street? My grandfather, Wadeen, was born in 1919. When was his first encounter with strange fruit swinging from poplar trees? Did he ever know a day without fear? Black bodies, black families, bathed, birthed, in fear. My DNA knows fear, and so shall my descendants. What is there to stop you along your path? Sanity has no place on the tongues of one with no morality. 2020. 223. 209, 235, 226, 2017, 2018, 
2019, 2020, respectively. Rest in peace. Black bodies swinging, black bodies screaming, black bodies suffocating. 2021, enough half measures, sidesteps, and bashful hands raised. Education, equality, and reform. Simply life never has so little been asked. Humanity. Step down from the comfort of couches, TikToks, and hashtags. Step away from the comfort of deniability. Step away from simple answers to complex questions. Step away from pride. Fish clenched tight against any who might seek to separate us because while you refuse, black bodies swing. Black bodies scream. Black bodies suffocate. Hey, Elio, yeah, can you? Yeah. Okay, so um, we can't see you right now, but we can hear you. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, I can see me. Okay. And you can see me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just run it then. I'm sorry, everyone is, does not get to see your face. Really, spring, okay. um, people are saying that, okay, I don't know why I can't see you, but it's fine. Um, I just want to say thank you for that. Um, I felt very um, like seen by your work and the way that you really um, challenge the audience directly. I, I enjoy that. I love that. I think that we need to interrogate um, the people who are consuming all of our black ass art, <laughs> you know, um, all of our black ass trauma and pain. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I also really appreciated the way that you brought in so many different artists. You know, I saw um, some Kehinde Wiley, um, Basquiat, I believe. I think some yes. Faith Ringgold. Yes, yes. Come through. Yeah. Come through. I see your knowledge. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I, I dabble. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was really dope. Um, can you talk a little bit about your process of, like, getting all of this imagery together and then also um, how you decide what parts of the poem you want to repeat? Yeah, yeah. Um, what is, uh, first and foremost, thank you. Thank you uh, for having me here. I'm really, I was really, really excited to have this piece shown. Uh, this is my first time kind of working with uh, my writing in this way and working with art um, and being a visual creator. So, <clears throat> I was, I was really kind of nervous. Um, I have a lot of dysphoria, so I don't, I was immediately like, okay, this is not gonna be me and myself on screen the whole time. Um, I'm going to use my love of all different kinds of art in a different way. Um, and it really kind of became a tribute piece. Um, it took on really a life of its own, which is crazy. Um, I had initially worked on a different piece that I was having some little technical difficulties like we're having tonight. Um, <laughs> um, and so my back was kind of against the wall and I was like, you know, I've kind of been dabbling with something else. Let me, you know, just give it air. Um, and anytime I write, I usually listen to music. I watch um, writers that I like uh, speak. I love, absolutely love James Baldwin. Um, 
So I was listening to some debates of his and things like that and listening to some music, you know, and immediately Strange Fruit came on. And I was like, I just, you know, I wrote the first line and I just kept going. And the last line is where I struggled for a second and was just, you know, I sat back. Um, so the process of picking the art was, you know, really organic. As soon as I had those first three lines, I was like, I want this to be powerful. I want us to speak about, we're coming up on 500 years, you know, since the first slaves were brought to the United States. So um, after I read the first, you know, I really call them the chorus line. <clears throat> I say 1526, uh, which is, really kind of, or yeah, 1526, which, or 67, sorry. Um, but <laughs> I'm, that's when the first slaves were brought to the United States. And so I was just looking at art online and kept saying each piece that's picked spoke to me as I was writing. Um, and so I just, that's really how I picked each and every one um, and filled what I felt was going to be the length of, you know, how I had to say it and how it had to come across. I just, I wanted the story, the pictures to tell their own story along with the words, um, you know, yeah. Yes, I, and I think like to that last point um, in terms of the pictures and the words, um, you know, working together, but also telling their own story. I think that's like really, really evident, um, especially like, uh, how you switch between like photography, um, visual art, you know, some stuff on a canvas, some stuff maybe like quilt, right? Um, it's really like all of these different expressions and different parts. I don't know, to me, it just represents like, you know what I'm saying, our ancestors, right? Like they were exactly. like, just exactly. like thrown in the shit. Exactly, <laughs> just how fluid, you know, we are as a people, how we've always, taking whatever is given to us and created something beautiful out of it, created something life-sustaining, created something that was by us and really for us, you know what I mean? Like each of those pieces, somebody can look at them, but without melanin, without the history, without, like I said, that generational pain, you'll never see them the same way that we do. Yes, wow, you, you're spitting tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Really, <laughs> it's the only way it's got to come. That's the only way it's got to come hard every time. Yes, yes. I'm you know, I mean, like I said, that's really the only way we're going to make things change in this country is to really, like I said, no more sidesteps, no more half measures. We've been, you know, an ethnic community that's really always bowed our head and had our hands out, you know, and um, it's really time to, to pick our heads up and look people in the eye and and use everything that we've learned as far as educating ourselves, you know, to speak on the same platform, the same levels that um, what we would call our adversaries come from as well. You know, uh, use the tools out of their own toolbox to create change by whatever means necessary. Elio, what, what you're talking about, um, would you call that abolition? I mean, I do believe in abolition, I will say that. Um, and I say that not to be reckless because I believe that there's plenty of plans. There are plenty of paths forward without one um, agency, one arm, you know, that our government has used to dictate how we, you know, we move around in a community. Um, you know, it's just, it's about the people that I point out in this piece. It's about that community of people that we call white people you know, um, that want to sit on couches, that want to sit on TikToks, that, that want to just be, leave that hashtags change, you know, change society, change laws. And it, it doesn't, it, those are great starts. Those are great ways to get the word out, you know, and to make people aware, but it still is about educating yourself, learning what are the laws in your community, you know? I mean, very simple instance today. I went to go get a haircut for this uh, interaction today. And, you know, I'm in Oakland, California. What's up, Oakland? Um, <laughs> you know, but I'm a Brooklyn kid, so I just love hood neighborhoods, I guess. <laughs> but I went to go get a haircut and I go to this place. Um, 
I really want to call their name out, but let me not be rude right now. Um, <laughs> um, and so I go there and I arrive on time. I um, get there and I have to wait and I'm like, okay, cool. 15 minutes and, you know, and I'm waiting behind a cisgender white man who's getting his hair cut. Um, I, it's then my turn. The stylist walks out of the room and the, the person up front comes to me and is like, uh, can you take your hat off? And I was like, I take my hat off, which is nappy. <laughs> and um, he's like, uh, yeah, she's, they're not gonna be able to do your hair. Um, and we don't really have anybody in the shop that can do your hair. I was just like, so not only did you, you know, come into this community, take over businesses, you know, that have probably been here for years, for generations, to not provide a simple service to the people of that community based on the texture of their hair. These stories are not like, this isn't a once one time story. You know what I mean? This happens across our country in plenty of spaces that we created and honed for ourselves. We have made safe for ourselves. We have, you know, created all of the businesses and little things that we need as a community to function. Just simply for someone to come in and say that this real estate is cheaper, I'm going to take it. I'm going to put something else here for a different type of community and I will not serve the people that are here. Something must change. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um... I, I totally agree with everything you're saying and want to thank you for sharing it. Um, the the aspect of, of self-determination, I think, and, and also just like, um, I want to say self-invention, but also like, yeah, I, I understand that this is communal, right? That we're talking about as well too, right? So it's bigger than the self. Um, but um, in the interest of time, I want to ask you one more question and then sure. we can get to, um, some other folks, but um, I was really curious about this. Um, I've actually seen your performance three times now, and um, I don't think, unless I'm just missing it every time, I don't think you say a title for the piece. And so I was wondering if the piece has a title, and if it does, what is it? And if it doesn't, why does it not have a title? And also, why choose to not tell your audience any of that information? Um, yeah, certainly. The piece is untitled. Um, it was really invoked in a sense of like being in 2020 and almost being like we were in bunkers or something. You know, I was kind of inspired in a way of like V for Vendetta, which is one of my favorite movies. Um, <laughs> and almost being like hunkered down. And this was like a broadcast to the people just like, you know what I mean? Like showing our art in defiance of what's been told of us. Because I mean, a lot of people, you know, would not know who these artists are, would not know their work, you know, by sight. Um, you know, and it's not something that's, that's really touted quite often. So I did it almost as like a piece in defiance, um, a revolution, you know, quiet over the radio, shouting people out and, you know, showing homage to, to just our history and showing how brilliant we are. Wow. That's really sick. That's so tight. I love all of that world building, right? And the bunker and the radio transmission. That's really tight. Um, thank you, Elliot. Yeah. Um, I really thank appreciate you. this for real. Um, no, thank watch you, it. thank you. You see that cash app? You should send money to that cash app. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I'm gonna drop some news that I literally haven't spoken except to a few people. I am so blessed to be a having gender uh, affirmation surgery, March 15th. I'm super, super excited. Like you have no idea. It's gonna be, I'm nervous and crazy excited, but like, I'm just, I'm here to say that for everybody that's out there, you know what I mean? Like we, we go through so much to be who we are, you know what I mean? But like, there comes a point finally when you're able to be whole. Um, so just keep going, you know, to each and every one of you. Hey, yes, congrats. I was giving you a round of applause. I hope that you saw. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you. 
Yes, yes. We got some folks showing you love as well. Thank you, Elliot. Most stuff. Most stuff. Okay, so um, this first piece is called Factories. Um, the beginning is an epigraph and it's um, blacked out. It says, people in Western culture say gender binary divided male and female and that gender fluidity is recent. This is not the case. Gender was made to sell underwear, cars, careers. Gender was made to rig countries, restrict liberties. Gender was made to maintain empire. Gender was made to maintain womb shame, penis pride, six million ways to die, gender neutral death options coming soon. Gender was made to unmake indigeneity, split people into prisons of expectation, presentation, performance, shackle people to labor production, private purgatories, shift power from the people to emotional pubescence, shape a portrait of so-called masculine and feminine, silence the astro energies pulsing beneath our skin, punish our most sacred priests, prophets, pleasure sharers. Gender was made to intentionally divide and conquer us. Gender was made to intentionally divide and conquer. Gender was made to intentionally divide. Gender was made intentionally. Gender was made. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just gonna keep moving along if we get um, video. Uh, in the middle of my set, then I will stop and we'll go ahead and run that video. Um, this next piece is actually gonna be an, um, a collection of poetry and essays that I have coming out in September, I'm really excited about, um, called 808s and Other Worlds. Um, hopefully I'll have some time to talk about that later, we'll see. Um, but this is titled Corpus Meum which is Latin for um, my body. My body be the finances of empires, old as greasy mountain, black as the mountain's backside at dawn, older than stars, studies and gods, my body built and builder country stand because we bent my body royal we arisen demigod phaeton the sun bringer a boy thought to be relic and fertilizer my body dark fleshed blue fire i sing my body's song throat like whittled wings praise my body learn to coax their needs until the quivers quit I remember our first sprint, how even then I mistook miracle for meaning, how even now I give myself mercy, I give myself forgiveness. Oh, thank you y'all, that poem is very special to me. Um, it's one of the first times I was really able to write about um, self-love in an honest way. So thanks everyone. Um, this next one uh, is also titled Corpus Meum. This is the second in a series of three. So I read the first one, this is the second one, and then I will be reading the third one after this. Corpus Meum 2. Why is this body marked and named nothing I named myself? 
Man is a fragile fort hiding secrets. Boy is a seed. Black is decaying. No one sees me and says, dreaming sunbeam. I walk like my father, cope like him too. <laughs> Poems alarm alerting who knew. Why don't I quiet and question poison seeping from my own skin? I am not a butterfly uncocooning. I am a boy who is now a man who was neither all along and more unknown matter at its melting point, endless seas of thunder clouds, my body, my body sounds better than skinny black, cheeks, nail beds, dandruff, teeth, dry scalp. My ancestors were property of property owning white men labor to be traded and traded and bartered like tokens. I know too much about tokens. My value legibly stretched across bone, stripped naked and lathered with grease. Savage, athlete, gangster, beast, concurrently an investment, both currency and investment I miss childhood. I didn't even believe in gender. But father stood and stared like stone and mother gave a sweet smile like there was no sickness. All the boys on the block claimed that a boy's soft spot became a pencil and that a girl's soft spot became a sharpener. I thought, how painful love must be, how men and women must suffer so much. Thank you all. All right, so I'm gonna do a poem called Midnight Marauder. I actually was gonna do it in my set tonight, but I took it out. Um, but, you know, I guess, I guess tonight was the night. Midnight Marauder. Going harder since 9-3, April 23rd, mom's birthed me. And rappers been acting like the best on that day, but I'm doomsday to the cape. Save hip hop niggas, I write quicker. Yeah, I brag on my pen. Very privileged that I hold one and it's not what I'm in. My QB vision is tremendous. I see into the end. And if the game is just a sport, I have the knowledge to win. Like not talking shit about kids and their trends. Because once upon a time, I was a kid on trends. My niggas had the skinny jeans with the Sesame Street tees. We got tees, but we looked flyer than mock speeds. And now jeans is the smallest thing that's changed. And old heads talking crazy like the games we arranged. And I know the golden era is like a forge and a flame. In the age of the 80s, something special was made, but we mad because a couple corny niggas get paid. Like Humpty Dumpty wasn't Soldier Boy in the day. Like Ray Shrimmerd ain't the edgiest kid in play. Now, some rappers nowadays are not pro-black saints, but even Big Daddy Kane rapped about gold chains and all the honeys he was pulling from the hip hop game and did you know these rappers freestyle every day? Which some would say is cliche, but most folks try to claim that new rappers can't come off the toupee. Anyway, these are all my weakest examples. New rap producers have more tools than a sample. The internet connects us. Fuck a radio channel. Yo, the music from the New York boroughs is now global. Plus, we have more women in rap now than ever. Yo, we have more women in rap now than ever. My trans family, my gender nonconforming people got records. Yo, your favorite rapper probably jacking our aesthetics. 
We've been doing this shit since before, before. And right now is just a trial for a future revolt. So if you ask me, we're probably the best we've ever been. Despite digital DJs and no head spins. I thought hip hop was the spirit of the bravest youth. But now I see cis old men just want to talk shit in the booth. Well, listen, we're here today to speak our truth. This rap shit goes on and on and on and on with or without you. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening. Um, one thing I didn't talk about was uh, this event's connection to Black History Month. Um, Black History Month is um, a little bit um, oversaturated in terms of the way that um, it's used a lot to market and sell things. Um, and so it was very important for us to have an event during um, Black History Month that not only um, had all Black performers, um, but also really felt like it came from a Black um, perspective and point of view. Um, and even furthermore, um, a Black trans, a Black gender nonconforming perspective, something that is uh, almost entirely always left out of Black History Month, right? When we think about uh, who we champion. Um, and when I say we, I do mean collective we, big society, right? Not um, everyone watching or, or the folks here tonight, um, because I'm sure that when we celebrate Black History Month, um, we lift up uh, all of our, our siblings, our family, right? Um, all us trans and non-binary folk and GNC folk. Um, but for tonight, it was very important that we um, set out to shift the narrative in that way and to shift the focus. So again, thank you all for popping up tonight. Um, we are oh, all right. Woof. What a night. And we still have two more performers, y'all. Um, our time schedule is a little bit wonky because we got off to a uh, on a shaky start. Um, so um, I'm going to maybe just read one more poem for you all. And then um, we'll go ahead and get into... Um, the other two performances. So hopefully this way we can get out around 8.30 or um, I know it would be 8.30 for me. Um, I think for other folks, it'll be 9.30 or 6.30. 6.30 for San Francisco, right? And then wait, no, 7.30. I'm going to stop talking about time now because I'm obviously confused. Um, but I want to share one poem with you all and um, then we'll move on. I also want to promote my book that's coming out, um, 808s and Other Worlds. The pre-order link is at the bottom of your screen right here. If you could, if you are interested in my work and what I've done so far, go ahead and pre-order that. Um, I'm really excited coming out in the fall, September 2021, September 14th, 2021. Um, numbers are really hard for me tonight. Um, so this last piece I'm going to do is called What It's Like to Be a Suburban Black Demi Boy. And uh, it's after a Patricia Smith poem that is titled What It's Like to Be a Black Girl, for those of you who aren't. What it's like to be a suburban black demi boy. I try on lipstick, mascara, dresses, and post pictures posing in dad's bathroom. I open my closet to decide which costume will make me feel safe. I remember a cop's pistol in my face when I feel not black enough. I often feel not black enough. 
not mask enough nor femme enough. I fall into the void that is my body. I am charcoal and cul-de-sacs and poetry and hours creating mythologies of myself, documents of then and now. With no sources to foresee my future, I leave the skin I shed in the corner, change my pronouns, and dance. Thank you all. That is that poem. One more time, just wanna plug my upcoming collection. Thank you all for listening. I know I did a lot of talking and a lot of poetry tonight. Um, so thank you for giving me this little time right now to talk directly about my book and to share this last poem with you all. Um, we're gonna move on to the next performer. We have Fearless Amaretto coming up to the stage. Fearless is a force to be reckoned with. They are a drag queen, burlesque performer, live vocalist, spoken word artist, and conjurer on their come up. This bi-gender badass doesn't come to play. The background and exotic dance and ability to emote make them a performance powerhouse that'll leave you always wanting more. Here to make you feel something real, here is Fearless Armoretto. I am nobody. Well, I guess I gotta be somebody, because everybody's somebody, even if you're nobody. But, well, let me explain. I'm the somebody who's about as much style as notebook paper. Girls can't even ID me, and I turn even lovers into haters. Haters of nobody. But see, I used to be somebody that called myself somebody until somebody told me I couldn't be somebody, and I believed them. Because, so yeah, I was that young and impressionable soul that believed that saying that man knows nothing but by being told. So once I heard it, I believed it. I seeded it, crossbreeded it with me until I grew into a great tree and decomposed the me I used to be until I became void. My old image became obsolete and it reprogrammed me to think that I only have the capacity to be one fourth the person that it used to be. But the funny thing is, see, I was right. You are what you say you are. And if only I would have stopped listening to me and instead started speaking. To me, I would probably still be 100% me. But don't be me. Stay you and go with the decision your heart to choose. And don't lose your identification for a false representation based on what others think or say you should be. But why listen to me? I'm just nobody. Let's be honest. We didn't plan this. We're catching feelings, I'm getting flashes of what it's gonna be like after the D-Light Saturday night are over, but I can't picture me right without me being right next to you, being your closure. I want to love you more over, more than an hour of passion, sweat, and eruption. See, see, I want to love you more closer, more like happily ever after, no interruptions. I want to be that fairy tale story. Letty and the Tramps are territory. Storyteller by the fireplace just informed me. See, it started with a kiss. <laughs> then we lost our clothes, see, see. I thought it was a fling, but now I just don't know. I'm caught in your tsunami, because when you touch my body, my skin begins to weep. Then I drown up in a blissful dream like sleep. Oh, sleep. And I pray you have sweet dreams because after a night with sweet lips, you acquire a taste for sweet things like chocolate kisses and back rubs and candle lights and hot tubs and spending quality time with a brother you'd like to love. See, infatuation sparks sensations of temptation that's greater than a nation and 
And though we had amazing relations, <laughs> much rather have a relationship with you because no fish and chips sound cool. Why well, settle for the entree? We can have the head chef too. You consume me in your tidal wave. You wash me off my island, babe. Thought I wouldn't move because I'm too rough or too tough. But I took a sip of your ocean, enchanted by your magic potion, and I'm hooked, and I, I just can't get enough. Hmm. To think it all started. Take a kiss. Hmm. Heavy in my soul, but light on my feet. Breathing life, whisper when I speak. Brainstorms like cyclones, whipping at sanity, a balancing act, breakthrough at the peak. Never weak, in fact, intangible. Blind mandibles can't bite who they see through. I win, defying gravity and logic. Invisible. I am rain, down to earth by inhumanity, and in the clouds that collect pieces of the universe. Aquarius, your cup runneth over but spilleth lightly. Drown the trout, but storms make well banks burst. It hurts, I know, but hold your chalice when it flows. And if you too have a cup that runneth over, just know, when you pour into another, and they pour into another, that is how we all begin to grow. I am thunder, feel my soul as I strut my energy, keeping appendages on edge. One too many false moves, I be done hoodoo, Joe ass, and leave you messed up in the head, express. Always keep good juju on my neck, pockets full of greed, greed, if you know, you know the rest. I don't do magic. I am magic. And my spirits ain't none you want to mess with. When Achilles went boom shakalak, my earth cracked, and the winds of change blew new seeds. And through time on this road, the rains make me grow, involving the being in what I be in. It's freeing to rumble like thunder and dance like wind and pour like rain the waters from within. I am lightning. When I strike, it's not off. But you'll be a fool to think I couldn't hit again. I am wind, defying gravity and logic. Invisible, but I'll move you if I need to. I am rain, down to earth I am humanity. And in the clouds, I collect pieces universe. I am thunder. Feel my soul as I stretch my energy, keeping appendages on me. I am lightning. When I strike, it's not often. But you'd be a fool to think I couldn't hit again. I am a thunderstorm. Mm. That was dope. And here we are. Hey, Fearless. Hey, hey. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciated your set. Um, yeah, your knack for rhythm and punchlines. Um, I really appreciated that. All the different looks, the different characters. Oh, thank you so much. I was, it, it, it's so funny because when I first, uh, you know uh was asked about this this show i actually thought that it was first a drag show because <laughs> that's what all i've been doing recently i it's it's been a little minute but i do poetry 
and I was like, oh, it's poetry. Okay, let I can do this too. Like, like, give me a second, <laughs> you know. But it, it, I'm, it came out really great, and I'm, I'm glad uh, I got to share it with everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think that really shines too, you know, and like the way that you meld the two, it really seems very natural for you, right? Like, um, for 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 your those characters or those personifications of of rain and lightning and thunder for them to speak how they do, right? And look how they do. But anyways, um, I can tell that you're like very influenced by obviously like spoken word. I, I feel like like neo soul and R and B, right? So I was wondering like um, who's like your favorite rapper or poet, or if you have like a favorite 90s R and B artist or band, you know? <laughs> Just Ooh. a lot of questions you can kind of pick one up. <laughs> Oh yeah. Um. So, probably. Uh, I'm definitely. I'm definitely very. Uh, heavily influenced by like neo soul. So my favorite. Uh. Has got to be probably. Uh, music soul child. Like he. He definitely framed by my '90s for me. Like it. It. You know. It, it, it's so funny because like even in school like growing up when I was like first getting into singing and you know things like that uh people would uh I used to play his music out loud because I didn't have a cd player all I had was like this little like portable dvd player <laughs> so I would put my cds on it and replay it on the bus and you know class before it started and I remember this one day uh this girl walked in and was like oh my goodness we know you can sing can you chill out and i was like that was a music soul child that was it <laughs> you know someone that didn't know who music soul child even was but you know it was it was a cute moment and i was like yeah i, I live yeah music, yeah that first album i just want to sing is so uh I iconic, truly. Set a tone. <laughs> oh yeah, I really loved on the radio too. Like that one really did something for me. Yeah. Um, it was really, you know, it was a bop. Well, a, a lot of he has a lot of good stuff, and I'm just like yeah, definitely. Which one, <laughs> which one was half crazy on? Just listen. It was either just listen or I just want to sing. No, no, I think it was just listen. It's just listen, yeah. Wow, he has yeah. a lot. Wow, yeah, <laughs> many bangers. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for uh, geeking out with me about that. Um, Absolutely. Um, so another question I had for you, like, as a performer, how important is um, memorization for you? And what is your process of memorizing? Because um, you seem to have the poems really in your body. Yeah, I'm, um, especially with poetry and even like music, things like that, like it's all about the rhythm for me. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very much one of those people that I remember emotions more than I remember facts sometimes. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll remember how you made me feel. I won't always remember what you said, but you know. So, but when it comes to music, it's, 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 some, it's more of that rhythm. Like if I can put something to a beat or a cadence, you know, I can always recall it because that beat, that rhythm, that cadence, it's like, it's like a life of its own almost, you know? It's like, it's the heartbeat of the song or of the, of the, poem or you know but yeah it's very that <laughs> yeah no quite literally the heartbeat of it like for real um i feel that i'm i i think a lot about musicality too when i'm writing um you know like if even if it's just a poem it's very important to me that like the rhyme and rhythm and repetition so yeah mm -hmm. I, I, I relate. <laughs> um, another question I had about your set was the way that you, and I, I think I brought this up too earlier, but the way that you were personifying um, weather phenomenon. Um, 
And I was just curious about like why you chose um, why you chose to do that. So uh, those uh, the last four in the set: uh, wind, rain, uh, thunder, and lightning. So those four actually originally were going to be part of uh, well, spoiler alert, it's already out, but um, I release music. Uh, I put out uh, a short collection of music. It's four songs and uh, I titled it, I am a thunderstorm. Um, and this, the poems were originally going to be like uh, during the release party, I was gonna, you know, say the poems to introduce, you know, kind of get you in the feel of what the song is gonna be talking about or what themes or, you know, but let's just say the universe had other plans that day and um, I didn't end up doing any of the poetry. And then just so happens I was hit up about, you know, I was asked to join this and I was like, okay, it was meant to be. Like I, I need, they were just like, this is the better platform for this, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, thank you for sharing that backstory. It's always really interesting to know you know, how certain people came to be or be, came to be presented and shared at that moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I was going to keep going on, but I didn't know how much time we got. I don't want to keep it. <laughs> no, you, no. Um, I, it was just, you know, uh, the, the different, like, if you actually, if anybody actually went and listened to the actual album, they'd be like, wait, but you're not talking about wind and thunder and stuff in your album. I was like, okay, okay, get this. When I break down the different parts of the storm, it's more so like uh, the different parts of me in a way. So wind is more so like the inner world. It's like, um, for people that I don't know, it, it talks about uh, mental health. So it was like a, um, I actually wrote the song. The song ended up being called Humpty Dumpty, you know, but um, it was all about mental health and I wrote it while I was in the hospital and it was like a whole thing. And then Rain was all about like healing, you know, so it's almost flipping the, everybody think of Rain as, oh, it's so dreary. And I'm like, no, like when it rains, like plants grow and, you know, things get new life. It's like, you know, but it was just breaking down and talking about it. But yeah, it was, it was an interesting, uh, interesting coming together of 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 pieces, and I'm glad to finally be able to share. Wow! Thank you so much for breaking that down, even just a little bit, because I feel like a lot of times when an artist does something using like the elements in some way or like weather in some way. Um, like I feel like there's a very surface sort of assumption of like what the what that's supposed to represent, right? Um, and so to hear um, wind for you, meaning mental health, and the song Humpty Dumpty, I'm thinking about wind knocking off Humpty Dumpty, right? Like just subtle things that are working like in the overall concept um, that are really sick. You know, that's just like stuff you wouldn't. Would it, you know, do you have to hear it from the artist? <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, yeah, I think we probably should get to Nilani. This has been great. Um, can we please, please, please run the Venmo and the Cash App at the bottom um, for Fearless? You know, right there. There we go. Right on time. Um, yes. Thank you. Like I said, um, fearsome, like you said, a powerhouse and um, we're all grateful. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> all right, y'all. We have one more performer for tonight, um, a Bay Area native and lifelong poet. They are a fond observer of the orbiting of bodies an acclaimed designer and a patron saint of the arts. 
please welcome to our virtual stage, Nilani. When it came, it came fast. I hardly had the time to look back, to see what had happened to my beloved, to my city, to me. It was as if it was all but a dream. There yesterday, as I remembered it to be. And then it wasn't there anymore. No, not the way I used to see. And here we are now, so far away from the memory of even just yesterday. And all I have left, a pillar of salt, boarded windows, cracked asphalt. No, I can't see a way out for me from this. You have to want to, to fight, to be. But I cannot feel anything of myself. And I have nothing but myself, my health, cratered, crushed, canceled, and all I see are the waves of the ocean. An unrelenting compulsion to give in to gravity. So I, I'll close my eyes for just a moment. 
I closed my eyes for just one breath. I saw the ocean. I felt the crest plunge right through me, right through my chest. I knew commotion. And as the fog lifted from my shallow grave, I heard the cherubs. They kneel to pray. They pray for the sun to they pray for the rain to put the fear in my eyes and wash my sins away. I heard the chair. to the light of day to baptize me in the knowledge and conviction of all that is holy so that our soul might shine bright for all eternity. But the sun, oh, but the sun, gave way even as the jaundice eye brought night unto Reclaimed the domain to which it has dominion. Don't worry, my darling. Worry not, my dear. This is not the end. For though this mortal corpse 
will rot and breathe its last breath. We will ascend unto darkness. <laughs> Hi, Nalani. Hello. Thank you so much for I closed my eyes. Um, it was such a pleasure to watch. I feel like it's almost like a short film. Um, I really appreciated the use of human breath as like sound texture and like motif. Um, and yeah, like the themes of oceans, um, the biblical references, the overall, like, I feel like there was like a vengeance to it as well. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about like, um, your influences for the characters that you create and, um, you know, how you, how you get into character? Um, well, actually, it's no acting. Uh, this was just me reenacting 2019-2020. Uh, um, so it could be actually interpreted very literally. Um, uh, I got COVID-19 last June and have had a really hard time and still am uh, recovering from it. Uh, so it's basically a chronicle of uh, before, during, and uh, where we are now. But there is a lot of symbology, as you mentioned, around uh, the ocean, uh, the gods of yore, and, the, and that. Um, and that's more uh, perhaps metaphor for the real events that it's also representing. Um, but yeah, it's, it's... Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I, I really also can relate to using um, almost like uh, that sort of like high fantasy or mythology. Um, to create around the the lived experience, you know, um, I feel like there's like a lot of freedom in that as well. Um, maybe just for me, I'm not sure. How do you feel? Oh no, I I love the use of mythology because I think it's perhaps even more accurate at uh, describing what words tend to fail at. Um, I mean, I think like poetry as a metaphor to express how we actually feel. And we use metaphors within the art of poetry to even try and describe that more accurately. And like I said, it gives you a bit of freedom because you don't have to try and be literal and use grammar and structure that inevitably fails to accurately describe something. So even using the mystical or fantastical gives you this richness that cannot be expressed within uh, grammatical linear time. Yes. Wow. You, wow. Yes. Thank you um, for sharing your thoughts. Um, who are some of your, so I asked about um, influences for character, right? But um, maybe a better question is, um, what are some of your influences um, as a writer and as a poet? Um, as a poet, I'd have to say Emily Dickinson. Um, has been kind of the theme. A lot of people uh, said that I, it sounds a lot like that. And we never really heard her writing or her poetry, so it's hard to you know how that's actually going to sound. And, and that's the interesting thing about uh, publishing poems is that on paper, uh, whoever reads them has to interpret how it's supposed to sound or even how the rhythm is supposed to be. Um, and even when I performed these, I had to actually adopt, I had to change their structure a little bit so that it would flow in the cadence of spoken word. Um, but from the spoken side that you mentioned kind of how the, the sound textures and the, the vocalizations um, create this kind of, I don't know, almost tactile sense. Um, my influence there would be uh, the musical artist Tricky. Um, and his, he uses this really beautiful guttural, uh, soft-spoken vocals that just really add this intimacy to the 
to his music and kind of I, I tend to uh, use that as an influence in, in my own practice. Dope. Okay, tricky. Yeah, I've not heard of that artist before. Um, thank you for sharing. Um, I also want to talk to you a little bit about um, more about, I guess, the ocean metaphor, right? Um, yeah, so, or, or did you want to say something about it before uh, I got? And ask you a question. Okay, for sure. <laughs> um, when I think about the ocean as uh, Black folks, especially, I think about like how it, um, separation, loss, right? Um, but also I think about, again, right? Like this, is a po this possibility of freedom, right? Um, and so, yeah, just like, can you talk about your choice to to center um, the poem around um, rain, ocean, et cetera, water, you know, um, what that means? Um, I wouldn't say so much a choice. I have the style of poetry, like I mentioned, and it, it shows that ocean scene before it actually goes into the next set. Um, it says starring Nilanya, uh, featuring Nilani. Um, I am the poet, but Nilanya is the muse to which I uh, channel. And so I didn't really choose the themes. I just wrote the themes as they were uh, conceived by the muse, the muse is perhaps even. Um, but the ocean theme specifically does come up uh, recurringly in uh, poetry. Um, and that, like you mentioned, there's a rich history of, for black bodies, especially uh, crossing the ocean it was not necessarily um, in, certain colonial times, uh, a pleasant thing. It swallowed up a lot of bodies uh, on those journeys. Um, and it too also represents that as they, there's a line that says, an unrelenting compulsion to give in to gravity. Um, and so it can be the swallowing force, um, but it also represents uh, the kind of the threshold. You see that beach line and the waves. There's a threshold between where you are, where you were and to where you might be going. Uh, so the ocean kind of represents this potential doom as well as this uh, transitional, uh, this transition from one state to another. Yes, yes. Um, thank you so much for sharing, Nalani. Um, um, is there any way that folks can support you um, if they want to send money or continue to follow your work, anything like that? Um, right now, I'm currently just on Facebook. I am working on launching a YouTube channel. Um, uh, so that will be forthcoming. Um, Facebook is probably the best way to reach me. Um, uh, yeah. So. Nice. Um, it's on the banner for everyone watching at the bottom here. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, again, thank you so much, Nilani. It was a pleasure. Um, to hear uh, your your thoughts and your process and how you create truly. Thank you. All right. Thanks everyone for um, staying with us tonight um, as we work through these technical difficulties to bring this program to you all. Um, I wanna say thank you to the Transgender District of San Francisco. I also wanna specifically thank Juniper Yun, Spring Collins and Aria Saeed. Thank you so much for um, uh, uh, allowing this to happen and for asking me to be a part of it. Um, if you want to know more about the programming of the Transgender District, use the link at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can also check them out on all social media, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. Um, tonight's programming will be recorded and available on the Transgender District YouTube channel. So um, if you want to rewatch a part or send it to someone, um, you can do that. Um, I think at this time, we're going to try and bring all the artists onto the virtual stage so we could say goodbye. And we can also maybe get one more round of social medias and uh, Venmos and cash apps and whatever.
I'm not ready. I'm not ready in the least bit. Oh. Hey. Um. Well, thank thank you all. I'm gonna make sure thank each of you individually. Thank you, Davina. Um. Elio. Thank you, Sarah. Um. Can we get um some. Uh, social medias and stuff back on the screen real quick. Just one last time. Yes. Um, thanks everyone for watching, witnessing the brilliance, the beautifulness, <laughs> the bountifulness rather, and the beauty that we call blackness. Um, have a good night, everyone. Make sure you get these. Um, support the artists. Support black trans artists.